Hello, this is lesson number 17. And of course, we talk about intonation today. It's a problem everybody is facing and it never ends. We can always improve on that. So today I will show two methods and one exercise that I believe can help you work on your intonation. First one, I showed just one second ago. It's singing and playing at the same time. Now I use solfege. I name the notes do, re, mi, fa, so, etc. You can use A, B, C, or if you're in Germany, A, B, C, or whatever. But make sure you name the notes. You call them by their proper names. So this is one thing I, I would like to mention. When I do this exercise, I always tune the playing to the singing. For me, the singing is always correct, even if it's not correct. This way, I'm learning to trust my instincts. And usually, the singing will be more in tune than the playing. So, I first do it as I sing aloud, just like I did before. And then I keep singing, but inside my head. Nobody knows what I'm doing inside my head, but it's when you practice. Make sure your thoughts don't drift elsewhere and you stay with the music. You stay with the notes, with the melody, and you sing naming note names. This is one good method which I know. The only other really good method for working on intonation is playing with a drone, with a constant note. So, for example, it would be same passage. careful, make sure we pay the same attention to dissonance as much as we do for consonants. Because it's very natural for us to tune the octave, but a seventh can also be either in tune or out of tune. for a ninth. steady, constant drone, same note. And eventually, this note gets into our mind and we tune to that. This is what should always be. You cannot expect an orchestra, a symphony orchestra of 100 and few people to tune one to the other. That would be like a dog chasing his own tail. But once you have the concept of a certain center in your mind, it is much easier to tune. Now, you can practice this with a consonant drone, like with it now, or you can practice it with a dissonant drone, and I will tune down my D.
So I tune down the D to a C sharp and now I can play. As it is, the effect is a little different now. Here we're not so much tuning to that dissonant drone, but we are rather fighting for our life and trying to keep the melody as in tune as possible. Last thing I would like to show you is an exercise which I do with all my students, um, jazz musicians, classical musicians, oriental music musicians, Everybody. Um, this exercise is called the All Interval Exercise. In this exercise, we practice singing and playing all the intervals, naming the notes and naming the intervals. This exercise is in the book and you can find it there, but I will show it to you just for now. It is based on the long shifts exercise and it goes like this. other whole note scale. C, B, major 7, C, A, major 6, C, G, perfect 5th, C, F, perfect 4th, C, E flat, minor 3rd, C, D flat, minor 2nd. So this way I covered all the intervals in the galaxy and I know how to spell them correctly as well as sing them correctly. We can do it from any note and it involves sometimes double sharps or double flats. We should do it, we have 21 combinations, C flat, C natural, C sharp, D flat, D natural, D sharp, etc., etc. So this way we have all the 21 combinations. Um, you can find more about it in the book, but once you know it, it's like knowing two times two makes five. The same thing, everybody knows two times two make five. So not, actually they make four, but um, we have to know the intervals, we have to know the names of the notes, and once you know it, it's really easy. And playing the bass becomes easy, because it's either easy or impossible. Mm -hmm.